Hello everyone, I'm Taina Baldon and I'm going to be presenting a work that I developed with Professor Marcos Massimo and Professor Cecilia Cesar about decision making for 5 vs 5 very small size soccer teams. So around 2018, LARC announced that in the next years they intended to include another modality in VSS competitions in which VSS teams composed by five robots would compete. I'm part of Eat Android's VSS team and I know that back then we only had a team composed by three robots. So with this announcement, we started thinking what kind of changes we will have to make in order to have a functioning five robot team. And this kind of motivated our work. In 2019, Lark hosted the first five versus five VSS competition. And you can see one of the matches in which our team is playing wearing yellow uniform and using the decision-making system that we developed with this work. So there are several classic ways to structure decision-making VSS matches. We can use finite state machines, petri nets, and even behavior trees. And this last way is the one that Ethan Rod's VSS team chose to use in its decision-making system for 3 vs 3 VSS matches due to its modularity and easiness in changing player actions. For you to understand better, it Android's 3 vs 3 VSS game strategy is divided into three levels. In the first level, we have the behavior trees. So we basically use them to draw a plan of choices so that our robots can perform in a specific role in a match. So these behavior trees kind of tell to a robot how to behave as a goalkeeper or as a defender or as a, an attacker. But the game is really dynamic, so we can simply tell a robot to be, for example, a defender from the beginning of the match until the end. So we also have another level of the game strategy that is an entity that we call coach. And basically what a coach does is it analyzes the game and defines the roles of each player and also kind of analyzes the game to see if some robots should change roles between them. And as we may want to change coaches during the game, we also have a finite state machine that chooses which coach will rule the game accordingly to different game states. So as I previously mentioned, there are many ways to structure the decision-making system of a VSS team. And since the beginning of uh, 2018, we've been developing the game strategy structure that I just showed you. And we've accomplished many good results with this decision-making system. Uh, we won many championships. So we believe we are on the right track for the decision-making system. So we didn't want it to change it. And what we did in this work was kind of adapt the game strategy that we have for our three versus three team for our five versus five team. And to do this, we adapted some behavior trees that we had from the three versus three team. And we also designed new behavior trees for our five versus five team. And we also designed a coach to rule these five robots and often a state machine to rule those coaches. And obviously, the techniques that I'm showing here, they are not new in the context of robot soccer, but the contribution of this work consists in integrating all these techniques in a full working game strategy for 5 versus 5 VSS teams that we have never seen before. So I'll start talking about the behavior trees that we adapted. The first one was the auxiliary behavior tree in which we inserted this kind of behavior to make the robot spin when he's really close to the ball. We did this because before that, the auxiliary behavior tree only made the robot kind of position himself in a good place, but he would never interfere directly in a play. And sometimes he, the ball was like right beside him and he wouldn't do any Thing. and we didn't thought this was really good so we inserted that spin when he's really close to the ball. Also we adapted the attacker behavior tree because previously it basically only used univector field navigation to try to conduct the ball to the goal but when the robot was really close to the corner of the field or to the goal wall normally if he attempted to use shoot univector to conduct the ball to the goal he wouldn't score the goal so we changed it and instead of using univector field navigation in these cases, we prefer to spin and let another robot try to conduct the ball. 
and also we created a new behavior tree for a role that we call second goalkeeper. So basically we watched many middle sort middle matches in which almost every team had a robot that would simply try to cover this goalie area. So what this goalkeeper does is basically if he's not close to the ball and he's also not close to these lines that surround the goalie area, he will try to get close to these lines using univector field navigation and if he is already near these lines but he's not close to the ball what he will do is try to predict where the ball would reach this line that he's covering so basically uh, he will do this by using the information of the velocity of the ball at that time and he will use something really similar to a line follower to reach this position and in case he is really near the ball, what he will do is simply spin in order to deflect the ball from this area. And we also developed two main coaches for our 5 versus 5 VSS team. Uh, one that rules the game when we are attacking, the advanced coach, and also one that rules the game when we are defending, the advanced defensive coach. So these coaches, uh, besides choosing the lineup of the team, they also have to check if some conditions are satisfied to switch roles between robots. For example, the advanced coach has to check if the attacker lost the ball or if he is far away from the ball. And if one of these conditions is met, he has to choose between one of the auxiliaries to become the attacker. And when we did this in 3 versus 3, it was really easy because we only had like one auxiliary and one attacker. But now we can have multiple auxiliaries. So how would we choose which is the auxiliary that is the best candidate to become the attacker? And basically we came up with uh, four criteria that we think that it's good to know from each auxiliary to actually see which one is the best fit. So it's good to know if the auxiliary is in a favorite position to conduct the ball to the goal, if he's not in front of the ball, so the distance from the robot to the ball, is, and also the number of opponents that are close to this robot. And then basically to choose the best candidate, we simply gather all this information from an auxiliary into an object and we place it into a priority queue that ends up telling us which is the best candidate. And after doing all of this, we had a decision-making system for our 5 versus 5 team. But we still didn't know some things like which was the best lineup for each coach. We didn't know which order of criteria to use to choose which auxiliary would change roles with the main player. And basically to figure this out, we did several Monte Carlo simulations in our team's game simulator. And we analyzed the statistics from all the simulations. And as we don't have much time left, I will talk only about two of the four analyses that we did. The first one being how we chose the best lineup for the advanced defensive coach. So basically we came up with these three teams. The first one that doesn't have a second goalkeeper, a second one that has, and the third one that has a second goalkeeper, but instead of having two auxiliaries has two defenders. And basically what we did was a little championship between these teams. And for each pair, we ran 60 10 minute matches. And here you can see all the statistics for these simulations. And from these tables, we can infer that the usage of the second goalkeeper slightly improved the defense because team A is the only one that doesn't have a second goalkeeper and it always loses more than the other teams. And also that having two defenders makes the defense a lot better because team C that has two defenders always wins more than the other two teams. But also it commits more faults. And then we also analyzed the best criteria order for choosing the auxiliary that would switch roles with the attacker. As I told you, there were four information that we thought would be good. And here we have teams with different orders of importance for each information. And what we did was basically a championship between these teams, again, doing 60 simulated 10 minute matches between each pair. And the statistics for these simulations are here. And from these tables, we can infer that 
it is really important for the auxiliary that we switch roles with the attacker to be in a favorite position to conduct the ball because the team that performed better here was team J and the two criteria that this team cares more about are related with the fact that the robot is in a favorite position to conduct the ball. And as a conclusion, we can see that this work allowed the development of dynamic game strategies for teams composed by five VSS robots, and that in fact, the decision-making system that we developed has already proved being efficient in real matches, because in LARC 2019, it Android's five versus five VSS team was the champion. And actually it did not lose any matches in the champion. So we think this was a pretty good outcome. To improve the performance of the strategy that we described, we think some future work could be done, especially optimizing the parameters used in behavior conditions and also trying to develop a system to run simulated matches in parallel in order to allow more samples of statistical data to evaluate the game strategy. So that was it. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'd like to thank all the organizations that supported this work.